I've been watching Tommy for a long time. He's struck me as particularly interesting, well, for two reasons. Is the first reason, I suppose, is because he is a genuine working class guy, and for better or worse. And second, I haven't seen anyone anywhere who's been more unwavering in his commitment to reveal the atrocities of the grooming gangs in the UK, which are act, what organized patterns of activity that are very pervasive, that are so terrible that it's almost impossible to talk about them without. <laughs> yeah, the grooming gang situation is like, once I discovered that, like we could get numb to things so fast in our culture, man. But once I realized that, I was like, yo, that's insane. That is insane. Out sounding like a conspiracy theorist. So now there's no doubt that there are many things that you could accuse Tommy Robinson of and many things, many of those he would admit to. But to me and also to my wife, fair enough. Um, but the fact that he's pointed his finger at something that seriously needs to be attended to and has paid a major price for it is also not ignorable. Yeah. Okay, let's see. This is him talking about the interview. Part two, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, no problem. Coming up. Just finished Tim Paul, running through the streets, sweating, hot, nervous, but ready to let rip in the most polite, articulate way I can about the current state of Great Britain. About the I'd be so paranoid. I, I, it'd be tough for me to take a video. Because I'd be scared like I would be showing, you know, some sort of address or, you know, equipment that's only known for that area that he's in or something. I'd be just be so paranoid. The intimidation by the British state and the police and the attempt to break the British spirit of the people coming soon. Love it, 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 love it. League in 2009. I want to get onto the far right label because this is provable as well. The media called it far right. From the start, we had a Sikh leader, Gurmit Singh. Okay, great lad. We we done more to educate the British public and the white, predominantly white working class community of what Sikhs have given, what other minorities have given into the UK. And the reason being, I'm from Luton Town, so the majority of my friends aren't white. So I, the ethos of the English Defence League started with my mindset. We had a Sikh division, a Hindu division. We had a lesbian and gay division. We had a Jewish division. We had divisions from every community. Doesn't sound very far right. Now, let, let, let's let not allow the media to decide whether an organisation is far right. There's a national extremism unit within the Metropolitan Police Force, and it's their job to define groups like the English Defence League and the BNP. The BNP what categorised as extreme far right. The English Defence League, the entire time I led it, centrist organisation. So because the media say it once and then say it 100 times, and then it gets regurgitated by the media and politicians and all alike, it was far right, it was far right. It was never far right. And it was always judged by the national extremism unit of the Metropolitan Police Force, who are professionals and whose job it is to do this and look at groups as to what constitutes. What you're experiencing now is what I've experienced for the last, for, since my activism. And this is their ability to take away my voice or anyone from hearing from me so that they can continually tell people how I think and what I think. That's all this is. This is them controlling the public's opinion based upon me. So they don't want people sitting and hearing my long form discussion. They would rather their, their controlled weaponized media is able to give headlines as which we'll get onto over the last two weeks have been absolutely incredibly false. And they've lied about me to the entire world based getting onto the fact that there's been riots in the UK and, and, and the, the media have said that I instigated them and directed them. There's no truth in that. There's no evidence of it. Not a single piece of evidence. What they use is once the media say it once, and I've gone on to watch as journalist after journalist, once, it's, once it was put out by the Daily Mail, journalist after journalist have continued to regurgitate it. And now it's spoken about as a matter of fact is that I controlled and I instigated the riots in the UK. Whereas the evidence is that I made video after video after video calling for people to remain calm and not, and not go out in violence. I just understood why they were angry. So the truth, and, and when we get onto the media, so the day, are there even, like, can you even call mainstream media actual German journalists? I met ADL Skinhead in the UK. He was very friendly, told me uh, that, you know, and only want people to obey British law. And I said, why would I be here if I wouldn't want to? He smiled and said, exactly, and shook my, shook my hand. Yeah, exactly.
Daily Mail, and the Daily Mail run a headline, uh, Peter and Tammy, that you've probably seen, where they tracked down where I was with my family. I was on a vacation. They cut this off weird. Quite a while, but you were quite instrumental in arranging this discussion. So why did you do that? Like why? Very long time ago and supporting you as well. Why did I want to do it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Mo why do you trust him? Why do I trust him? I don't know. I had a pretty disagreeable Irish father. And uh, he was and he was a smart ass, you know, and uh, I trust Donald Trump. I trusted Donald Trump all along, too. Welcome. Welcome. I don't know. I just I know when you like disagreeable are, men. I like men who have uh, values that they'll stand by and the, and they are brave and say what they mean. I I think we need men to stand up and I need we need women to figure out their crap because we're causing a lot of trouble. And I'm going to try to help with that. Love that. Are Irish more uh, aggressive? I like Irish people. I mean, his, uh, ethnically, uh, I mean, in America, we have like ethnic Irish people. And I've usually gotten along with them. In Britain, who told you the truth about this story? Everyone else that was threatened over this story shut up or retracted their statements, yeah? He contacted me and said, you have to pay £50,000, make an apology. Um, for your defamation, because I went online and said that the Syrian refugee had threatened to stab someone, and I said he attacks girls. Yeah. They said that wasn't true, so they then started legal proceedings to sue me. R okay. This is where it starts. The judge gives an injunction where he listed everything in the film, and basically said if the public ever see this, you get two years in jail. So at that time, I didn't play the film. I'm despised as a race trader. I went on record as saying, actually, you're all cowards, yeah? Because What's failed, if we want to admit what's failed, Sikhism hasn't failed to integrate in or assimilate into British society. The Jews haven't failed. St. Lucians haven't failed. Everyone else, they haven't failed. You are taking a problem that, that what's failed, and I just speak about my experience from growing up in Luton. And again, I'll set the record straight. Not every Muslim, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying every Muslim. Some of the best people I've met growing up are Muslim. Some of the people I love and still have relationships are Muslim. And I challenge any journalist, any journalist, Come to Luton and find me Muslims with non-Muslims. Just and every time, like every time when I was leading the defence league. Ah oh, man, this is a tough one, right? When you go into the whole like, well, they keep to themselves. I mean, you could say that about a lot of people. That's not the issue here, but that is one of the issues I would say. But you can, if I was going against him, I would say, well, you can see that you can say that a lot of, about a lot of people. You know, white people keep to themselves. Um, there's black people that keep to themselves. Like, why is it about Muslims specifically? You have to be, you have to use things that are specifically the major issue here, right? You know, journalists will come and interview me. I said, you walk through the town and you try and find me Muslims or non-Muslims. You won't find them. You'll have the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Now, we didn't create that. We can't be on our school. I speak about when I grew up, it was the Muslim playground and the non-Muslim playground. So I grew up experiencing this. I experienced the separation, the segregation, the, the zero assimilation. And, and I knew something was very, very different. And until I think in 2011, I was spending 22 weeks of solitary confinement. And I challenge again, anyone listening to do this, take the Quran. I was sent in the Quran by a Muslim outreach organization trying to convert me. So I took the Quran and thought, right, let's look at this. And I opened it and I challenge any of you to do this. And every time it says, do not be friends with Christians or Jews, just write the verse number. <laughs> Do not be friends with them, bro. That's the least. That's the least bad thing in that Quran, bro. Man, you got to uh, see. This is the issue, right? People are gonna walk away from this, be like, "Okay, what's the big deal?" They don't want to be friends with you. Big whoop. Big big whoop. Like, who cares? You know. I get what he's saying, but dude, you got to, this is your, you know, there's a lot of people watching this, bro. Folks who have been in England for years integrated and say the same thing about mass immigration and know the problem with Islam. Yeah. Even some Muslim. Yeah, that's funny. It's kind of interesting, huh? You will have pages and pages of verse numbers. So then what you have is children being brought up. And if I brought my children up and all of us as white people brought our children up to do not be friends with black children, we would see hostility and violence but sooner. And all of a sudden, when I started dissecting this book, everything I'd seen my entire life growing up made sense. Everything. And I don't, and these Muslims are being brought up to believe this, to believe that this is the word of God, that this is what they want. That's why we don't have assimilation or integration. So when I talk about the problems, I've only ever spoke. I haven't spoke against immigration, which is why I'm under attack by people who are against total immigration.
courage to do what you your convictions. Yeah. You have convictions, and you go forward, and you want to tell the truth. Where's that come from? Probably, I said it, it, it. Probably, even if I didn't, even if I didn't want to, because. There are 95 mainline Islamic sects, each somewhat different. That's why some Muslims are okay. Well, the Quran is the Quran. I mean, they follow the Quran, right? The Quran is, the subject matter in the Quran is a major issue. Is a major, major issue. So they either follow it, they think it's the eternal world of Allah, or it's not. Obviously, some people are not going to participate and do everything in that book. But that's where it gets tough, tricky. Especially when you add taqiyya, right? You can kind of hide and say, well, I'm not an extremist. I'm this type of Muslim. I'm this type of Muslim. And then, yeah, it's, it's tricky. If you meet the people I've met and hear the stories I've heard. Yeah, there's a lot of Qurans too. But they, they say there's only one. I assume they're talking about the, they talk about the Cairo uh, Quran, which is like a, an attempt at making one universal Quran. But it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's all stupid, but. Okay. See, the other thing that happened to me, you see, when I was young, 23, younger than that, I started this when I was 13. I started looking at the worst things I could find, right? I started that when I was 13. The first thing I did that was seriously academic was to, a report on prison guards in Auschwitz. And I spent the rest of my life investigating that, looking at the worst things I could find. That horrifies you so badly that I think, it's, I think what it does is scare you straight. I know, which I tried having these conversations with my now ex-wife. If you think you're worried now, I know what the consequences. Yeah, right. I know exactly. I know what's coming. Yeah. I've got three beautiful children. Yeah. If if anyone's got a fight, I'll fight. Yeah. They're not fighting. Yeah. And what what our cowardice is currently doing? We've bred a generation of cowards who care about themselves. Yeah. So yeah. and half my friends were the same. I'm all right. Yeah. I've got enough money. I'm okay. You can't keep running from this problem. This problem isn't going anywhere. That's right. This problem is going to explode and on, on October 7th. In fact, the longer you run from it, the larger worse, the it will be. It's going to get absolutely yes, right. and, and, and October the 7th really woke a lot of people up to see not yeah. not yeah. it happened in Israel, but to see the level of hate in every university, to see the orange I'd say that that woke me up for sure. Just wanted to pop in. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on notifications. Also, consider becoming a channel member. You'll get exclusive content no one else gets to see. Also, you'll be able to see the content before everybody else. This really helps me on my cause of talking about stuff no one else wants to talk about. Maybe if it's a documentary or just on location reporting, it helps fund all that stuff. So if not, no big deal. All love. Peace.